My name is Ruth Armstrong. I'm a consultant clinical psychologist uh, and I specialise mostly in working with children, although I do also see some adult clients for various uh, difficulties. Um, I've been a clinical psychologist for 31 years, since 1980, yes. And uh, my qualifications are I've got a Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Psychology, I've got a Master's of Applied Psychology in Clinical Psychology, and I've got a Doctorate in Clinical Psychology. I've worked for many years with children and families. Um, I've been head of a child and family uh, psychology uh, discipline, so I was head of discipline in a, several different NHS, or three different NHS posts, where during those times I, I grew the services and developed you know more psychologists and so I've also supervised a lot of psychologists in their practice both trainee psychologists and then fully qualified psychologists so I don't only see clients I also help other psychologists to develop their ways of working. Um, I have uh, set up in East London a learning disabilities and autism spectrum disorder team where that was multidisciplinary so in my team there were um, people from many different disciplines, family therapies, psychiatry, social workers, psychologists of course, uh, so that we could cater to that client group. The sorts of things I can help with are uh, behaviour difficulties that children have and uh, that might include a behaviour program such as a star chart, uh, the sorts of things that you can implement at home but that I can help you do perhaps better than you might have done before because there are certain scientific and practical principles that can really, really make a star chart work. One of my clients once came and complained to me that their children who were on a star chart had turned into star millionaires and they couldn't afford to pay up. <laughs> so that was quite a result <laughs> because, you know, doing them properly. So can really do lots of things on behaviour change that can work in the home. I can uh, provide some assistance with sleep disorders and sleeping can really disrupt a family's life. So there are practical things that can be done which can resolve sleeping difficulties. If your child is anxious or depressed, uh, there are good therapies that I can provide that I have used a lot. I'm, I'm very uh, skilled and experienced in working with anxious or depressed children. And I particularly specialise in helping children who've had a traumatic experience who may be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, which is known as PTSD, or even if they've got some residual symptoms that maybe don't warrant a total diagnosis, but after a road traffic accident, for instance, they might be very anxious about going in the car and have trouble sleeping, that sort of combination of things. And I can, um, well, we, those can be resolved through therapy quite quickly often. I can never guarantee it'll be quick, but I have had a lot of experiences where you get rapid resolution of symptoms that have been hanging around for quite a long time and blighting the child's life. So it's good to get the therapy sooner rather than later, really. And when I mention PTSD, that links often with anxiety and depression. It may be that, or even uh, bedwetting, which is another thing that I um, help people resolve, children resolve, because sometimes the real cause of some of these difficulties can be a trauma. And parents don't always know that their child's been traumatized. Uh, but sometimes when you trace it back, you can find out. I also do assessments of personality. I use the Rorschach inkblot test, which is a famous test. It's been around for a long time. It's quite con controversial where uh, the person looks at a p an image, which is like an inkblot, a messy image. <clears throat> it isn't anything really. Uh, and then they tell me what they think it might be. And, I, and you can do that with children as young as five. So it's a personality assessment where you couldn't really give a five-year-old child a questionnaire reliably, but they can actually do this task. And it goes from young children right up to the elderly. And I say to people, it's a bit like looking at clouds. You can say, well, that could be a crocodile or a tree or whatever. And then on the basis of how they perceive the, the images, because it is a test of perception, and all the abilities and, and so on that they bring to bear in making those determinations, uh, on the basis of that, it's amazing what you can find out about their personality. And so the sort of things I do therapeutically is I work um, with children therapeutically, particularly who've had a trauma, and often they've had what I call a small T trauma, which will be something like a road traffic accident or other sorts of accidents. I've worked with some children who've had a 
it's hard to say it's not serious, but it's a less than some children go through of, say, sexual molestation or something like that by a neighbour or someone in the family or someone outside the family. Uh, and the therapy that I do for that uh, trauma is either cognitive behavioural therapy, known as CBT, or eye movement desensitisation and reprocessing, which is called EMDR. And both of those therapies have been found to be very effective, and particularly EMDR therapy works quite quickly with children. One little boy said, it's a miracle, after just six sessions I'm better, and I thought it would take months, and he was all better. And I've recently had an experience like that uh, with a little boy who wasn't actually suffering from PTSD but had some residual anxiety about travelling in a car and some anxiety about going to bed at night and had some sleep disturbance, didn't want to go up to his room and things like that. And it was just six sessions and he was all better. And I said to the mum, what made the difference, you know, because it, people bring their strengths to a situation. And one of the nice things she said to me was, well, it was also the way you were with him. You weren't too stiff and starchy. So I like working with children. I really enjoy it. I like to have a child-friendly atmosphere. We do drawings, sometimes there's toys, but we get down to the serious business as well. But EMDR can be quite playful. One child that I'm working with about, um, you know, suffering after a road traffic accident, he, worries when and a lot of them do worry that if their daddy drives a bit faster like suddenly accelerates so he's got a magic button that he has in the car where if he presses the button the car will go slower that's an imaginative thing that we do with the MDR. obviously there is no such button sadly but just having played with that and doing the playful things with the mdr then he was able to then start to think more realistically and think, well, actually, I could ask Daddy to stop and I could go to the loo on the motorway and things that really will work, but the playful side is the starting point. <laughs> the reason that I work with children and families is that I really enjoy it. I'm quite a playful person and I'm also a very serious person. I had my own difficulties when I was a child and uh, I really want other children to get the help that basically I didn't get and uh, to get better, not to carry things on for a long time because these treatments are there and it's such a joy to me when I see a little child, like a little six-year-old I saw recently and he was really suffering and then after just a few sessions and he's all better and that just is wonderful and I said I'm quite playful so I have you know toys and things in my therapy room but I'm also very serious and I take what I do very seriously so it's, I just find it very uplifting, very enjoyable. I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, I love families. I really actually believe that families are the cornerstone of our society and I also believe that they don't get as much help as they need and I think that we should put a huge amount of energy and expertise and love into caring for families.